In this video, I'll show you how I painted a model to the highest possible standard for a box art, all the while attempting to paint the model as if it's underwater. Yes, underwater. This is an incredibly tricky thing to pull off, and hopefully I'll come out on top. Or who knows, maybe this whole thing will be a huge disappointment. We'll see. So sit back, relax, and enjoy watching me try to paint something that I've never tried to do before. You see, I knew I really wanted to make something special out of this miniature. I know that the sculptor Lila Kalilia has put a lot of effort and a lot of herself into the model. The sculpt also won gold at Monte Sansovino. I was going to be the first to paint it. This is a huge honor, but it also puts a bit of pressure on me to try to do something that's worthy of the piece. A drift is a model about drifting from one place to another, a rest yet peaceful search for a place to call home. Just like the silence of being underwater and finding freedom of movement in dancing. Furthermore, Nolius Miniatures, who produces this model in a strictly limited edition, has included a beautiful art card from artist Patricia Santo in the kit. I'll go ahead and put a link to Nolius Miniatures in the description if you want to pick up this model for yourself. So it was only natural for me to take some inspiration from the art card included with the miniature. But before we get to that, let me go ahead and tell you that if you want to see the full extended version of this video, you can go ahead and sign up for my Patreon. On there, you'll find an edit of this video that is more than an hour long, and it includes a deep dive, no pun intended, into the the theory of color constancy, of how to use watercolor to paint the caustics, and ambience. Go ahead and check out the Patreon through the link in the description. Okay, now let's talk meaningfully about how to achieve this underwater effect. Here are two guidelines I've set up for myself studying various references. Number one, stronger shadows and no bounce lights. Number two, all colors are pulled towards blue. I'll use a bit of violet in the shadows and some turquoise in the highlights. And then I'll use ultramarine blue as a glaze through the airbrush to try to unify the whole surface of the skin. But before we can start to paint, we do have to do some prep on the actual model. The first step in doing this is to cut off some of the larger pieces of resin, such as this one, and to scrape the knife along the edge of the mold lines in order to get rid of those. We can sand away any trace of mold lines that may still be left behind. We can use super glue to glue together the different pieces of the kit, and then use liquid green stuff or milliput or some other form of gap filler to fill the gaps between different parts of the kit. I also like to use a little bit of satin varnish in order to relent from having any unwanted texture in the gap filling material. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I cannot shut up about sketching. And I'm always keeping in mind the painting funnel. At the top of the funnel will be at the beginning of the project. And at this stage, I'm always using thicker paints and bigger brush strokes. Further down the funnel, I'm working on a smaller area. I'll work with thinner layers of paint and try to create a more refined version of the sketch. I'll leave this about 80% finished before moving on to a different area of the model. Brush strokes are definitely smaller and the paint is definitely thinner than it was in the first rough sketch. The very bottom of the funnel is the smallest brush strokes and the thinnest paint. Here I'll be stippling with tiny dots in a glaze consistency in order to improve the final blends. Now I don't want to invest my time in painting in this way if I don't know that I want to commit to what I'm seeing and this is why I've adopted this approach to painting. It is really only in those last 20% of the finish that I'll put careful extra attention onto the delicate and smaller details of the model. Almost all of the painting up until then is done by focusing on the bigger picture stuff that we'll see. I find that keeping in mind this general view of the miniature is much more important to making a paint job that I like rather than making one individual element look perfect at a time. So as we're painting, I'll make sure to have the funnel in mind and let you know where we are in the funnel at any given point in time. After painting the rough sketch, I'll make a bit more of dedicated skin tone mixes in order to refine the sketch a bit. On the palette we have carbon black, violet, and Caucasian skin, along with some blue hues such as oriental blue, ultramarine blue, cobalt turquoise. Of course a bit of titanium white and some Van Dyke brown. We can use a bit of the violet in the shades for the skin tone, and so we can really see how the blue makes the skin tone go a bit more grey, and when we brighten with the turquoise we go more towards green. Thank you. 
from there we'll start to use some of the mixes we've made on the skin. We have to be careful though and hold off on some of the brightest lights. We want to reserve those for the caustics that we'll paint in later. At this point we really have to stay in the mid-tones and in fact what you're seeing me paint here is probably too bright. This is definitely an example of me painting per my usual habit. But hopefully you can clearly see how the brush strokes are smaller and the paint is thinner. I also wanted to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting me over on Patreon. I really, really appreciate your continuous support. It means so much to me and it means that I get to keep making videos just like this one for everyone on YouTube to see. So thank you so much for supporting me. And if you like what you see here on YouTube, I hope you'll consider supporting me over on Patreon for the full hour version of this video that you're watching right now. Anyway, enough with the self-promotion. Let's get back to the painting. With the stomach, we have a really interesting dynamic shape. The bottom of it, which is pointing downwards, should have more of shadow and darkness on it, whereas the top that curves towards the light will catch more of the light. And I'll come back in eventually and darken some of these areas on the stomach. I'm also sketching in some of the lights on the lower parts of the figure, but again, these will become much darker as we progress on and I will darken everything. Remembering the rule of having stronger shadows. So not having bounce lights means that the planes that are facing downwards on this leg, for instance, are all going to be in shadow. For the cloth, we'll work with various hues of blue and turquoise, and here Samurai Green from Chimera, along with Othello Blue Green Shade, really comes in handy. Along with a little bit of Cobalt Turquoise, they make for some really wonderful mixes that look a little like this. Just as we saw with the skin, we're now taking a little more care with our layers. We're trying to work with smaller brush strokes and refine the sketch that's already there, rather than paint over the whole initial sketch. It's starting to blend and though it's not perfect yet, it's just where I want it in order to move on to the skin and refine that some more. We'll go back to the skin where I'll show you some of the bottom of the funnel. Off camera, I've reworked the skin a bit and especially darkened some key areas. I've glazed in with the airbrush a bit of the ultramarine in order to create some stronger shadows. And what we're seeing here is some of the techniques that you don't often see in miniature painting videos. I think part of this is because they are just so slow and take such a long time, but they are very important nonetheless. We're working with just putting down rows of dots, and we're stepping up and down the value scale that you saw me mix before. Putting down one line of dots of the darker tone, then moving up a step, putting down a second line next to it, and so on and so forth. We'll repeat this process until we have a smooth blend that we like. Once you practice this technique, you'll realize that smooth painting really is quite simple. It just takes a lot of patience. But especially since this is a box art painting, 
I'll want to make the results as smooth as I possibly can. So I'll spend quite a long time dotting away. And here is a small section of that footage. I'll then do a similar process, go back and refine the cloth even further. So you can see how I gradually finish the whole model at the same time. I'm always jumping between different elements and trying to refine everything gradually instead of making one piece of the puzzle perfect at a time. This is just how I prefer to work and I think that you should do the same, even if it makes for a little bit more of a confusing video. Now at this point I do decide that I think I've darkened the shadows, especially on the hip, a little bit too much. So I'll come back in and brighten the hip quite a bit. The hip is a large volume, so it's important for it to have the proper light placement. We'll also work a bit on softening the edge of the calf shadow that we have down on the calf muscle. The technique that I'm using here is really much the same, and you'll see this kind of funnel principle all on one element, from a rough sketch with brave thick brushstrokes to a more refined piece with very careful and very deliberate places of tiny layers of paint. Okay, so we've finished the skin and the cloth, and it's now time to break out the watercolors and paint the caustics. For the watercolor, I am using titanium white, ultramarine blue, and titanium yellow, all from Schmincke. The nice thing about this is that these pigments correspond to the same pigments that I have in the acrylic range, so it's incredibly easy to mix something that's very compatible with the pigments I've used in the rest of the paint job. Here I'm starting to work with the watercolor to try to paint the caustics. If you want to know more about how I use watercolor and what to think about when painting this sort of element, you can go ahead and check out the extended version of this video over on my Patreon. For this footage though, I'm really trying to find out what works with the model. Keeping in mind all the theory we've discussed in previous sections and looking for lines of light that I like and that complements the shape of the model itself. So rounded lines on rounder volumes, sharp drop-offs on plane changes, and flatter, relatively more straight lines on flat planes. And there it is, the final box art for Adrift. What a wild ride it has been. 
In the end, I sent off these pictures to Noelius and the miniature was finished. What a great experience. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have much more content for you both on my Patreon and on my YouTube channel. I hope to see you there. Happy painting.